Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Um, my name is Manuel Hartung. I'm the CTO of Dynamic eFlow, and I'm happy to be able to show you the benefits or the potential of direct pooling, which is a technology that we focus very heavily on. Um, let me maybe give you just a very short overview of what we are doing. We are like a, a smaller company with 15 people at the moment situated in the south of Munich in Germany. And our focus is on improving the performance of electric motors mainly through direct cooling. And direct cooling is something that I will explain a bit more in detail later. But um, this basically, can, basically enables us to build very lightweight or very high power machines. Um, so we can increase power density, we can increase cooling where it otherwise is very difficult. And um, this basically enables us to provide motors that are like sometimes hard to imagine or like otherwise hard to get. And one of the focus is the aerospace industry where together with partners, we build these, uh, at the moment we focus on drives for these electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, eVTOLs, as you can see on the left picture. The other focus is uh, the vacuum um, application because their cooling is very, very limited. Um, and our technology enables you, us to build high direct drive, high power systems that can be cooled in an environment where otherwise it's very difficult to cool. The third market for us is on the left, on the bottom. This is one where serious production is already running. Um, it's test bench motors for very high speed applications. And the last market is the uh, commercial vehicle market, which is something that we are just starting on. Um, we as a company are like for founded 2014. As said, we are 15 people at the moment. The last years, our technology was rewarded also for some, uh, from some, um, what's that? Yeah, <laughs> like we got some rewards. Uh, at some awards and um, the partners that we are able to name are Airbus, Fraunhofer and Atesteo, with which we are cooperating on different um, projects. Okay, um, to, to talk about what is an electric motor basically and why do I need or why would I imagine a direct cooling system? On the left side, you can see an electric motor and I'm sure everyone knows basically how it works. I will just be very short. You have a stator here. Um, from iron, you have uh, the winding, the coil made of copper, and we have a rotor. This is a permanent magnet one, which is what we focus on most of the times, but generally speaking, this technology can be implemented. Any type of motor. And the torque of an electric motor is generated through the current in the slots, in the coils, and they create a magnetic field, which then with the rotor together creates torque, if I'm very, very simple. And the losses in the electric motor mainly are um, generated in the windings in the copper because we push quite a high current through the copper. So that creates ohmic and AC losses sometimes, depending on the system. And these need to be evacuated from the system. And this is where our technology comes into play. Basically, you can see on the right side, we use coils that are hollow. This is what we cool, what, what we call direct cooling. And the motor on the left is already wound with these coils. So basically we developed a technology to use these hollow tubes, hollow wires, and they can be just used in a normal way like normal wires and we can create electric motors that have quite a different behavior or like different performance than normal conventional systems. For example, this one on the left is one of our first bigger prototypes. It is a 80 kilowatt peak machine from an automotive uh, drive system and it was an 80 peak 80 kilowatt peak and 40 kilowatt continuous system and we just changed the winding didn't touch anything else and we managed to push this one to 80 kilowatts continuous power while even be, um, having like 40 degrees lower coil temperatures than before so this shows a bit of the potential we are not talking about some percentage increase but really like a factor of two or three is easily possible and this was already a quite well-cooled uh, water jacket electric motor. Um, this shows a bit more what the challenge typically is. If we have a look on the left side, this is a conventional um, filled slot. It's just the winding head is cut off so that we can look inside. And here, if the heat is generated in the copper, it has to move through the enamel of the wire, which like, this is just a physical um, thing. So, everything that insulates electrically 
also insulates thermally, which is something that we have to work with. And that means you have the insulation, the electric insulation of the wire itself. Here, it's like a potting, for example. Then you have the slot insulation, and then you just, just then you get into the stator, which is of iron, which is quite conductive for, for heat, but not, not as good as copper. That means the, the um, heat has to go through different layers of insulation with very low heat um, conductivity, and then only gets, for example, to a water jacket on the outside of the motor, meaning the temperature difference between the copper and the coolant on the outside is quite high to create a sufficient um, heat transfer. In, with the direct cooling system, you can have the coolant on the inside in direct contact with the copper. The copper itself has like 400 watts uh, th um, divided by meter times Kelvin. And for like uh, insulation, it's more in the area of 0 0.4 to 0 0.7. Sometimes you can find something with 1.2, but it's like a factor of like almost a thousand in between those values. That means the heat conductivity from the copper directly into a coolant is much, much higher than um, if it has to go through some kind of insulation and then if the coolant is further away from the copper. And this is basically the, the main driver for us, which enables us to create very high power dense systems. We can have direct contact between coolant and copper, and thus we can remove a lot of heat from the system very fast or even with very little effort. And this enables us to reach current densities of up to 100 amps per square millimeter of copper, which is a lot comparatively like a well-built High, high spec water cooled machine will reach something like 20, 25 ms per square millimeter. So we are four times higher than a very well built and good cooled typical electric motor. For like an air cooled system, this can go down to like three, four, five ms per square millimeter. And this, this is basically what changes. So it's, it's not that we full, always fully use this or that you would fully, fully use this current density capacity, I would say, but it just enables, gives you a lot more freedom in designing electric machines. And this is what I want to show you later. Um, but just to maybe, we have like one visual aspect on showing how, how that works is we have a small demonstrator here. So on the left side, you can see a conventional coil. Uh, on the left side, you can see one of the hollow coils, which you can see has some um, tubes connected to it. So it will be supplied by some coolant. It's a very simple demonstrator that we can take with us for fares, for example. And on the right side, there's a coil that is just conventional copper. And um, you can see there's like a battery inside. There's a very simple electric circuit running through both coils and then back to a switch on the right side. And you can see the hand moving. So the switch will be opened and closed. And if that happens, you can see the left coil you can touch and the right one starts to glow very fast meaning the left one has a temperature of let's say 40 degrees. It's still able, you are still able to touch it and the right one reaches 700 degree, degrees very fast. And this is the main driver behind our technology um, or behind the general direct cooling technology in general. Um, you can use, utilize very, very high current densities and thus have very power dense electric system. Um, here, that's, this is, Another topic that you can utilize if you have direct contact with the coolant and the copper is you are very fast and you can dynamically cool the system. So you don't like a typical cooling system is running full time all the time, full power. And the temperature of the winding is determined by the, um, by the uh, power, by the losses. And um, yeah, by, like by, by, the, by the power of the electric motor, and thus by the losses and then the coolant temperature. But it will basically, if the motor is running very hard, it will get hot. And if the power is very low, it will get cold again. And with our technology or this direct cooling in general, you are able to manage the temperature and the winding. So for example, this is an, a measurement where a system is not cooled, the temperature is increasing quite fast. So this would be something where you had to switch off the system or reduce the power a lot. So this is way in the overload temperature and then we just switch the cooling system on and within 10 seconds the temperature drops from 125 degrees to 40 degrees and this is this could be then a continuous operation for example. So you don't have to switch it on and off but you could modulate the pump like giving the changing the power levels and this means you could even try to keep the coil temperature at a, at a, at a certain temperature while um, 
changing the power level, for example, in the car when it drives, like needs high power for acceleration and low power for continuous driving. And you could manage the temperature of the coil to not fluctuate too much, which then in the end increases the life of the insulation. Um, when you're designing electric motors with a direct cooling system, it's not only that you have different limits, for example, for the um, cooling capacity, which we are basically almost free. I mean, it's, it's very seldom that there's a system that cannot be cooled sufficiently. It sometimes takes a bit more effort, but basically this is not a limitation anymore. But on the other hand, you can even improve, improve the power density a lot. For example, here, um, this is a part of a stator, very simply simplified. This would be a rotor part with magnets and this the um, the this orange brown color is are the coils in the slot so basically this would be a conventional motor would um, the magnets and the coils with the current would provide some magnetic flux which then results in a torque in a given torque and a given power at some point and you need a certain amount of copper like a certain filling factor for example and a certain um, um, area of copper to result in a, in, a, in a usable current density for a given power, a different, let's say, continuous power. If you, could, if you could increase the current as far as you liked, which this technology basically allows to, at some point, the current increase would not result in a power increase anymore because you would reach a saturation effect of the, of the iron laminates, for example, of the stator, of the rotor. And at some point, you could even endanger the magnets for demagnetization. And to enable you to build even a higher power density without um, losing efficiency and losing performance, you could then start changing the amount, the, the percentage of the stator of the teeth, which would be here, this area and the slot. And this is what we typically, typically do if we really want to reach very high power levels and which is something that conventionally is not impossible, but the normal, normal technologies don't allow allow you to do this, is you can really increase the current in even more and reduce the area of copper that you use for this and thus result in very, like in bigger teeth, which can provide quite a lot more like magnetic flux. You need to adjust the rotor, maybe use different magnet materials, but um, you could then, even from the same given size, you could increase the power density even more and the torque density of a motor. And this is one of the effects that I wanted to show. I mean, it's just an example because I think 20 minutes are not enough to talk about every effect possible. But and just one example to say that this really big improvement in the cooling enables you to open a lot of different fields where you can improve or even change the machine. I mean, it's, it's, it, it really has a big potential. It's not like really not some percent, but you can increase the power density by times two, times three, times four, depending on what the base system is. Um, this technology in general also enables us, or like enables to move the base speed point of the electric motor. I mean, we cannot change the physics obviously, but um, because you can set the motor so that the rated speed is on a higher level, which would mean that the torque normally would be reduced, but we can compensate this compensate this factor by increasing the current because thermally that should not be a limit anymore. And this enables you if the supply voltage is given and the volume is given to even sometimes, or well, like most of the times reach a higher power level. So if you can move the base speed point to the right side here for a permanent magnet motor, for example, then the overall power that is achievable is, is also increased quite a bit. Um, to the end, I want to show you this is this is uh, as I talked at the beginning one of the test bench motors, which is something where this technology is applied in a very big scale. This is like a 600 kilowatt system, and this was all, it's running at 25,000 RPM, which was only possible by reducing the size of the active parts through the very good cooling technology, and otherwise the mechanical. Um, construction would be very difficult and also to find bearings to support it. So now we could reduce the active parts, reduce the turning mass basically, and this enabled us to find a bearing system together with a partner that was suitable to survive these high speeds 
and also the high um, the high the long time that this has to run. And on the right side, you can see test bench for this direct cooling system. So basically, this is something that is still a pretty young technology. It's in general speaking, we didn't invent the direct cooling. This was something that is used in very big generators since quite a long time. But these are like very very big tubes, and it's not a wire that can be wound, but it's more like a plumbing job um, to build these motors. So basically, there was no way to transmit this into very small machines, and this is this is what we enabled. Uh, with this technology, basically. Um, this is also another view on like a small test bench. Most of the test benches used are hydraulic test benches so that these long, thin capillaries can be monitored, can be can be evaluated so that, that the behavior is pretty clear. This is a very important part of, of this um, direct cooling system. But once you know this, the rest then can be optimized. And yeah, I don't want to take too long. I would rather leave some time for questions. And so I just have a summary in the end, which is more if someone didn't listen uh, for this for this uh, talk. Um, basically, this technology enables to you to reach very, very high torque densities. In the aerospace area, we reached 165 Newton meters per kilogram, but this was just for the active parts, but it's still quite an impressive number. And up to 100 Ms per square, mm, square millimeter, of current density in the winding. And this technology also enables you to be very, you can ignore the environment almost completely. So you can reach very high environmental temperatures. You can also work still be still because the coolant is in direct contact with the copper still with like very high cooling temperatures. And the third point is you can actively control the temperature of the winding if you want to. So meaning by actively controlling the pump, you can control the temperature to different uh, to, to a certain temperature. You can even use this to increase the temperature if you want to reuse the heat for some other applications. So you're very free on thermal management. And this completely results in like very high um, power densities. Thanks a lot.